Hi there everyone, this is Bob Martin with rcsub.com and the Nautilus Dry Docks. I want to share with you my latest project and this is a 31 inch Disney Nautilus RC conversion. Uh, I want to take a few minutes to walk you through the model from stem to stern and show you how I put it together. All right, let's take a look at um, what the total package looks like uh, as the uh, customer is going to get it. Uh, this is a Pelican case, um, extremely highly rated for uh, durability and reliability. Uh, and it is also uh, touted to be waterproof, not that that's a big deal uh, with this particular model as things are going to be wet inside it. Um, however, I did dress this up a little bit with some, uh, some really neat uh, rivets to dress up the, uh, the look and feel of the case, keep it in line with the, uh, the contents. There are five uh, heavy duty catches and uh, pop this open and we'll take a look inside. This is how everything is, uh, is laid out. We've got the display stand uh, section, we've got the battery charger, battery charger instructions, the power pack for the battery charger, of course the model itself. Got a little storage spot here for all the miscellaneous bits and bobs for uh, heading out to the pond. Radio, uh, radio antenna the uh, subdriver or watertight cylinder and uh, the RAM and of course everything is in here uh, nice and tight uh, when the uh, lid gets put down it uh, keeps everything down uh, nice and firmly there's no movement so it's uh, it's perfect for bringing to the pond and the other neat thing about this uh, particular case is you can see it's got wheels and uh, on the other end, you can see we've actually got a uh, pull-out handle. So you just put it down like a piece of luggage, uh, roll it from your vehicle to the pond. It's actually really, really slick. So let's take a look at, uh, at the model itself, shall we? All right, let's take a look at uh, what we've got to work with here. Um, of course, we have our uh, radio system. This is a six channel FM system operating on 75 megahertz, which is the, uh, the proper frequency for surface craft operation uh, in North America. Um, while we're here, why don't we screw the uh, antenna in place get that all ready to go we have the main uh, sub driver here and let's take a minute and we'll uh, we'll go through the uh, sub driver in detail we've got the uh, forward end the battery compartment central area which is our ballast system and our aft section which is basically our motor compartment so uh, let's take a look at the front here. We've got a uh, hold down tab that uh, I 3D printed. Uh, and this is the uh, location that the sub driver gets bolted into the model. It's the only place, a single screw, and uh, that, oh, that's what holds it down. Uh, this is the lighting lead and the main power switch. We have the uh, main drive battery. This is a lithium polymer. Uh, battery, uh, got the charging access point right here, and the um, lead for charging, the balancing port. Uh, if we take a look on the inside here, we've got our uh, propel vessel. This is a little pressure vessel that the uh, liquid air goes in for the ballast system, and we can take a look at that right now. Um, this is Badger Propel. It's used in uh, airbrushes for uh, hobbies. Uh, this is the charging adapter that comes with the uh, model and basically to fill the ballast system what you do is uh, push this down on the top and that, that uh, allows the liquid to flow into the um, uh, pressure vessel. Uh, this is extremely cold um, it's, a, it's a liquid gas when you do this it should typically be done 
with some uh, gloves, safety gloves and goggles. So just bear that in mind for anyone who is uh, going to be using this. Moving on, uh, let's take a, a little bit of a closer look at the ballast section in here and how it works. So we've got a, a little arm, you can see a servo here, and this moves uh, back and forth. When it pulls in, uh, it seals the vent shut tightly uh, and it actuates that little Schrader valve in there and that's where the uh, liquid air gets burped into the ballast system and that's what displaces the water and pushes it out these big holes uh, in the bottom. When the uh, servo pushes out, uh, it opens up the valve, lets all the air out and that's how the model would submerge. Moving into the back here, we can see our main six channel uh, receiver, and that is six channels, so we've actually got some, uh, some spare channels uh, for the owner if he wants to plug in some additional features down the road. Uh, right now, I've actually got a spare servo hooked up right now, so it, it is there if uh, anything wants, uh, if he does want to put anything uh, in place for that. Um, as I mentioned, that's the main ballast servo, the speed controller, our three servos for uh, rudder, pitch control, and then uh, one spare one. This is a, an auxiliary power switch. Here you can see it can be actuated uh, through this little arm that's sealed up. Um, it doesn't really need to be there, but uh, it's in place and ready to go. Um, main drive motor. Uh, in the back here you can see our seals in place our magnetic uh, linkages, our main drive uh, motor right here, and this is the antenna for the radio system. It runs outside uh, the cylinder, and as you'll see here in a minute when I get things hooked up, uh, it gets run along the inside of the hull. So that's the, uh, the expensive part, the, uh, the main drive unit uh, for the cylinder. Let's take a quick look at the model itself. Um, as you saw a minute ago, this is the, uh, the main RAM and this is utilized to hold the upper and lower hulls together. So uh, to secure the hull, you simply put the uh, RAM in place and that locks it down. There is a tab in the back that keeps the back in place, the RAM in the front uh, very quick, very easy, no tools required. So let's take a look inside here. I'll pop the uh, RAM out to uh, get access to the model. You simply lift up on the front and then slide it forward out of the back. Here's all of our uh, flotation foam in place. Uh, this is the main lighting lead, all of our LED lights. Um, all of this flotation foam is, is basically in place and I trimmed the model to be slightly positively buoyant and I did that on purpose because the, uh, the new owner um, is going to be exposed to the world of RC subs for the first time with this model and to have it ballasted slightly positive is uh, an insurance policy. If anything goes wrong it will float back up to the surface uh, eventually even with the ballast tank full. So let's set this off to the side here for a moment and take a look at the uh, the lower hull. Uh, we've got our saddles for our watertight cylinder, uh, some ballast lead in the keel, some drain holes to let all the water flow out. This is the uh, the rear uh, hold down bulkhead and that basically um, orients with these two pins in the back uh, and I'll go in that in a second for the installation of the cylinder. Uh, let's take a quick look here. I had this prep for shipment but I'm going to pop this tape off so we can see. So taking a look at this, uh, you know, the, um, the action end of the sub, you can see our main drive shaft here and a, and a beautiful little brass propeller, uh, our pitch control linkage, 
and if I can get my fingers on it, the, uh, the rudder linkage as well. Now, the other thing I want to note here is we've got a clear piece of plastic, and that's put into a groove in the rudder. It's friction fit. There's no uh, screws or anything to hold it down. And that basically improves the uh, turning radius of this model by about 50% uh, or maybe even better. I would say that the turning radius uh, of this model uh, is probably about three to four feet. Uh, so it would describe a, a six or seven foot diameter circle uh, hard over, which is actually uh, perfect. It gives you a, a nice tight turning radius that allows you to run this in a, in a, you know, a swimming pool uh, or small pond without any issues. So let's uh, go ahead and uh, talk about putting the cylinder uh, in place. So to do that is, uh, is very, very simple. Keep the uh, cylinder oriented upright and you know it's up because the vent of course needs to be uh, at the top. You're going to drop the cylinder down uh, and again, there's those two pins that I was talking about, and they go into these two holes right here. And you just basically put those um, in place, get them lined up, and slide it forward. Now, uh, the other thing you need to make sure that you do, that I didn't, is uh, get your, your drive shaft lined up, and then push it forward. So what you can see happened here is the magnetic linkages automatically lined up with their mate uh, on the other side. Everything is all lined up and attached. This is our radio antenna. And uh, the way that this works is you basically run it through these holes in the bulkheads like so. all around the perimeter. And what that does, is it stretches the antenna out to its, its full length, uh, maximizes uh, the reception for the radio system. So now that that's in place, it's being held down at the back uh, with those pins. And then up in the front, and I've already packed it of course, but there's a, a bolt and that simply goes down into the front of the um, little bulkhead there uh, into the model and uh, secures the front and everything is nice and tight and uh, nothing is going to go anywhere. Um, one thing of note you want to make sure when you join the upper hull and the lower hull together with the uh, lighting lead when this gets uh, put together. You want to uh, make sure when you put this down that this doesn't happen, that this cable does not end up getting outside. So you gotta make sure that that's tucked in nice and snug inside. The uh, tab at the back gets tucked in underneath the lip and then the front drops down in place. And your ram goes in and you're ready to uh, ready to rock and that's basically the installation of uh, of the subdriver unit very straightforward nice and easy minimal tools required to do so the uh, battery when it shows up is going to need to be charged um, with the supplied charger and the instructions uh, are there in place. Uh, your radio system utilizes uh, off-the-shelf AA batteries uh, which is great for going to the lake. You don't need to worry about running out of juice because you uh, don't have a charger there. It's just um, as I said AA batteries that go in the back of the unit. You can bring as many as you need to go to the lake but these will last for a, uh, a really long time. Uh, on a, one set of batteries. 
All right, there you have it. Uh, that is my latest build, 31-inch Disney Nautilus. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, uh, or concerns, by all means, you can hit me up anytime, bob at rc-sub.com. I would love to hear from you. Uh, be sure to subscribe to my channel. Uh, I've got lots of other projects coming on. Uh, give you a quick uh, sneak peek. This is an OTW Type 7 U-boat. Um, just a massive model. And uh, this one's going to have lots of really cool features, including operational torpedoes front and back. So stay tuned for that. Again, thank you for joining me and uh, hope to see you next time.